We'll talk today about what is management, what it means to be a management major, what we have to offer you here at Coastal. So first, we'll start off with a pop quiz. You love those, right? So what is management? Is it A, the detailed study of the shape and size of a cranium is supposed indication of character and mental abilities? B, the study of the positions and aspects of the stars and the belief that they have an influence on the course of natural earthly occurrences and human affairs? Hmm, what does that sound like? Or C, the art and science of directing the operations of both individuals and organizations to achieve desired marketplace outcomes. You know the answer already? You're only in 110. What is it? C. <laughs> yes, very nice. The answer is C, silly. It is not the study of the shape of your head or the study of the shape of the stars. It is all about organizations. The art and science of directing operations. So this is what management will be about. We usually talk about this in terms of four main components. And I'm not going to go into all of these, but you're going to see this again in your Intro to Management class, planning, organizing, leading, and controlling. <coughs> How do you consider yourselves leaders? Absolutely. So that is a very interesting topic area. I'm teaching a class in leadership for the MBA program right now and pushing them to the extent where none of them want to be leaders. <laughs> they might have raised their hand in the beginning, but now they're like, oh, this leadership stuff is tough. We talk about that in our management classes. So you want to be a leader, we can help develop you in that area. You want to organize people and control organizations. You want to be a CEO. Uh, or you just want to be a middle manager who has power and impact over people in the company. Absolutely, all of these things have to do with the field of management. So why would you major in management? That's our next main question that we want to address. And there are a lot of good reasons. There are very hard, objective reasons why you might want to major in management. Because management majors are in high demand, you're likely to um, find that there are many people hiring in this area when you graduate. There's job growth in this area. And then compensation is one reason why people choose the business school in general over a major in a different area, right? I think there's also a softer side. I think there's also a softer side about why you might want management. And personally, I think because it's interesting. Because what could be more fascinating than thinking about how a product gets onto a floor? So how does Walmart know when they're just about to run out of bananas and they need a whole shipment of bananas? And where do they come from? And how do they get here? And Nothing is more fascinating than wondering, why are my employees thinking this way? What will motivate them to perform higher at a better rate? Also, we then talk about management as having a real impact on people and on society. So you can do good with this major. You can help people. You can help employees, whether it's by increasing their performance, making them feel better, find work-life balance. You can help people. And you can also change the world. We saw uh, Liz Fork and Bohannon from Seiko Design. She came to Wall Connections in the fall. Did anybody go to Wall Connections in the fall? Anybody see her? Oh, you missed an opportunity. She does. You saw it? Yeah. So she decided that she wanted to help women in Uganda. And uh, she started out, oh, well, these women are so poor. She's traveling the world. Oh, they're so poor, I have to help them. And she first thought, well, I'm going to try to raise money. Or I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bring clothes and other donations. And the women she spoke to in that country said, we don't need clothes. We don't need donations. We need jobs. And she said, oh, boy, how can I get you jobs? Well, she started her own company. And that's what she did. And um, the women that worked for her, there's a time period in between their version of high school and university where they're supposed to work and save money you know, a period of nine months or so. And women in Uganda have a hard time finding a job in that time, so many don't go to university. So that's when she employs women to save money to go to university. And she helps them, and she helps them save money, and then they can go off to college, which is what she wanted. It's a greater good. She can do this using her business skills. And those women make handbags and sandals, and she sells a lot of them in the US, and that's where her company is based. So in business? You can make a difference. You can help people. You can help people in this country. You can help people in other countries. And um, 
you can change the world. So why would you want to major in management at Coastal in the Wall College of Business? And there's a good answer for that too. And um, there are several good answers for that. We have a very experienced and educated faculty. So you'll find that most of your faculty have terminal degrees, which means they know a lot about this field. Plus, they have a lot of experience actually doing it. We have a new entrepreneurial management concentration. And I'm going to tell you more about all our concentrations in a minute. But we've just hired recently a gentleman that has experience starting four different businesses and selling them. So what better to learn from than somebody that's been there and done that? And honestly, one of his businesses uh, ended up in bankruptcy. So learn from him what not to do, <laughs> right? <laughs> But what better experience than being able to see somebody and talk to somebody that's actually done it from start to finish, if that's what your dream is, is to start your own business. So we have people with the education, we have people with the experience, we have people with passion that are teaching our classes. And I think we have the best cadre of professors in the whole university in the management department because they care so much about you and about you learning and about you getting what you need to get out of these classes to be successful. Um, Focus on the skills you need to graduate, critical thinking, communication. These are the things that employers are calling for. Not just you know how to do accounting. Not just you know how to lead people. But can you think about problems as they occur and take into account all the relevant information to make a good decision? Employers want that, right? That makes a lot of sense. You're going to have to be making a lot of decisions on a daily basis. So these are the types of things we'll practice in our classes. What information is relevant? <coughs> what should I be paying most attention to to come to a good decision? Employers want that, and this is the kind of thing that we do and um, simulate in our classroom. So hopefully you can tell we really care about teaching, and we really care about learning, and we really care about the students in the College of Business and in the university as a whole. What we have is five major options. And you can choose a general management major. And the general management major is 18 credits. And they're all 18 credits. So they'll all be six classes in your major. And that's on top of the BSBA core classes. So if you chose a, a concentration area, then your degree would be BSBA, Bachelor of Science in Business Administration, major in management, concentration in human resource management. It adds a third layer if you pick a concentration. Basically, if you're major in management, you're a general management major already. So what you'll get is you'll get a class in organizational behavior. Now everybody stand up. All right. Raise your hands in the air. Wiggle your fingers. Turn around. All right. Rub your belly and pat your head. Good job. You can't do it. Sit down. Why did you do that? Oh, OK. So there's some kind of power dynamic going on here that you're just going to blindly do whatever I said, right? Now, maybe not whatever, but you did what I said. This is what you talk about in organizational behavior. Why do people do what you say in some circumstances? And why do they not do what you say in other circumstances? And how can you take advantage of that knowledge to get people to work harder for you and advance your standing as a manager and your standing as a company? <coughs> you want to know why people do the things they do. And that will make you a better manager. And that will make you a better leader. So everybody, actually, in all of these concentrations, will take a course in organizational behavior. They will also take a course in human resource management, which has to do with important things like hiring people. Who is the best person to hire? This is a critical decision in an organization. You start hiring the wrong people, your organization is going to tank quickly. Very critical decision. So that's human resource management. Selection, training, once they get in there, how do you best train them to be good employees? Um, uh, recruitment, selection, staffing, compensation, how do you pay people? How do you know what job descriptions are? What are people supposed to do on a daily basis? How do you um, appraise their performance? All these things are human resource management. So two classes that every single management major will take, very important in organizations. If you get into entrepreneurial management, 
uh, you'll be taking classes that set you up to be able to start your own business when you graduate and, and or run a family business. And I've seen a lot of people that have family businesses around here, whether it's in retail, obviously in Myrtle Beach you're going to find a lot of restaurants, retail. Um, I know one guy in our program, his father owns a trash collection business around here. So you may have a family business. This would be, be ideal. And it isn't necessarily just for people that want to start a business because it teaches you to think creatively. Now there were 17 frozen yogurt stores that opened in Myrtle Beach at the beginning of uh, last summer. Do you think 17 frozen yogurt places could all survive in Myrtle Beach? Which ones will? You have info about that? The toughest. Ah, the toughest. What makes them toughest? Their price. Their advertisement. Okay. What makes them, wh who's going to survive? Location. Okay. So somebody who's doing things differently than everybody else, right? Yeah. So this is what this concentration does. How can you think innovatively? How can you think creatively? And there's one class that specifically is thinking like a leader, an innovative, creative leader. And that's one class we have that um, is in this concentration. And if you're in general management, you can take it as an elective option. So, and then also you have a class that you'll start a business plan. So you'll have a business plan um, where you look at the competition, you look at these kinds of factors, like what should I do to differentiate myself? And then you also have a class where you actually have to do something called a practicum or an internship. So we have connections, and maybe you have connections with small businesses in the area that you'll actually go out there and work for them, and you'll see how tough it is. One of our MBA classes right now is consulting with Coastal Coffee Bar, Class 544. Have you seen that? Now, look for it. Think about when you drive by that business, how tough it would be for them to survive. What do they need to do? And that's what our MBA class is trying to work with them to do. So that could be an internship you could have in the entrepreneurial management concentration. Uh, then we'll move to human resource management. We have a very, very strong network of human resource managers in this area. We have a very, very strong faculty in this area. So human resource management, Selection, training, compensation, performance appraisal. A lot of these background things that have to happen in an organization are very, very, very important to the success of the, the organization. It cannot be ignored. Um, we work with the Coastal Organization of Human Resources, which is our local network. And several people actually, through networking, have been hired in that HR area locally. Um, the key is, and you guys may know, that um, what do you think gets you hired? Is it what you know or who you know? What does the research suggest? Well, you have to know something, right? So maybe getting a bachelor's degree will at least get your foot in the door. But the most common way to get a job nowadays is through knowing somebody who knows somebody. So it's not your direct contact. It's your direct contacts that can say, oh, I know this guy who's hiring. I know this woman who's hiring. So it is still networking. It's going to be very, very beneficial to you in getting a job. And that's why they talk about the, like LinkedIn, right? LinkedIn can help you network with hundreds of people online. So our HR concentration, they have networking events. They, they work with the local HR leaders. They help you network in that area. So you'll get better in your professional skills, introducing yourself, talking yourself up, you know, things like how to interview. They do sessions like that. And through our SHRM club is usually where they're doing that. Our SHRM club is a student organization, Society for Human Resource Management. And they have a very active SHRM club, and they won an award last year for um, how good they're doing, you know, how active they are on our campus. So, and that was a, it was a nationwide award. It wasn't a campus award. So our SHRM club is very strong, and they interact with real local professionals. But well, that would be HR. International management, international management, also 18 credits. You'll take OB, you'll take HR. It also requires a study abroad. Because if you're majoring in international management, think about the disadvantage you might have if you've never actually been to another country. So we want to get rid of that disadvantage. You will study abroad as part of the international management concentration. And there are scholarships available. You have to apply and be selected for those. But we do have scholarships, um, and we have programs. Most of our programs are in May mester. So they, you travel abroad in May, um, and you can take different choices for different countries that you might go to um, to fulfill that. Our most common one is through Europe. We also are, have been running one through China. 
um, every other year or every year. So you can choose different areas, and there's some flexibility in where you go, but you will study abroad. The operations and technology management. So this is the um, behind the scenes supply chain. How does the product get from the uh, place where it's put together and manufactured to that store shelf? We have an awesome class called Global Supply Chain Management, which will talk about how all these things we have made in China get to Walmart and how Walmart can do it so cost effectively, more better than anybody else. And so technology components to that too, because obviously you're going to need that technology to be tracking product, for example, and that often helps companies, including Walmart, do that most effectively. So everything's 18, 18 credits. Um, if you're a management major, you'll be automatically general management, and then you can pick one concentration that interests you if you choose to pick a concentration. But there's no harm in choosing one. It just adds that third layer. You'll be BSBA no matter what, management major if that's what you are, and then you'll have a third layer, which is the concentration if you choose a concentration. So we have many faculty in each of these areas that are great. They would be very delighted to speak to you, including myself, about what your job might look like, where your interests are now, and where that might put you in the future, and what might help you in terms of your choice here. So the one thing that I missed as I'm talking about all of these that you want to know is the salary averages, right? Yeah? yeah? <laughs> all right. So there's a median salary range. Now, keep in mind this includes people that have been in the management field for a couple decades, for decades but is a median salary range that hopefully doesn't turn you away from this. And you can see there are many different types of job opportunities. Fortune 500 companies are probably the best payers. Not-for-profits would be a lower payer. But if that's what your passion is, is to save the world, then use your skills to save the world. Work for a not-for-profit. Um, and obviously the government as well. There are many, many different places that are hiring managers. And that's why we say, why might you major in management? Well, because there are many, many different organizations every year that hire from this field. Um, the entrepreneurial management, you may consider this. Uh, small businesses do make up the great, great majority of our, our uh, economy in the United States. So how many of you are considering uh, being your own boss someday? Yeah? Wow, this is most of the class. So, and this is why we added this concentration act, actually, when we did the needs analysis, it tested the highest. There are a lot of people that want to start their own business and be their own boss, and there are many different ranges of what type of business it could be, which is interesting. Um, but you'll learn about that in this concentration. Um, potential job opportunities for HR, you will see that this specific degree was ranked number one for return on investment with projected job growth of over 20% in the next few years. So there is a lot of potential here. Um, you might be an HR director, you might be in charge of recruiting, training, talent acquisition, which means getting good people to apply and hiring those people. Um, those are the potential job opportunities there. International management, um, we know that we're becoming more and more global all the time. So with um, globalization and technology working together to shrink our world, essentially, make us smaller um, and more efficient in many cases, that these type of jobs are going to be in demand. You might work for a multinational corporation like Coca-Cola, Walmart, AT&T. You might be a foreign service officer for the government or you may work for a humanitarian organization. So there's the doing good part. It can be incorporated here as well. All right, what will you do is, uh, if you major in uh, operations and technology management, if that's your concentration? Well, it's the technology component in particular that is uh, hot and in demand. You guys probably recognize that. Uh, rated number two in return on investment after HR, with a projected job growth as well of over 20%. All right, so what will you be? You could be a research analyst. You could manage logistics, uh, operations, or materials. And again, this is uh, getting the product, maybe raw materials, together to manufacture them into something that you can sell, and then getting that saleable product to the store shop, kind of the back behind the scenes. Quality assurance, 
we just had a speaker. Um, you have the you have the Galaxy. What's your phone? Is it a Galaxy? Uh, Samsung Galaxy. No, it's LG. Okay, he was. They were talking about the Galaxy and how they did quality checks. Mm -hmm. And if if he can be believed, I think he he worked in it. So. He said that they, they, they made one small component in the galaxy, right? Their company did. And their quality check was they would take it up um, nine feet or something. I don't remember, don't remember what, how, how far, but they would take it up and then they would just drop it. And then they would open it and they would see if their part broke. And that was their quality control. So uh, how many will you allow to break out of a sample of 100, something like this? I don't know. But uh, basically he said that as, as long as their part's going to survive this fall, then they were comfortable that it was uh, high quality enough to survive its every day from your pocket onto the floor right there, right? Yep. So anyway, interesting method of quality control, but apparently, apparently they did that. Um, so can you assure quality of your components that they're not going to be breaking when, they, when you drop your cell phone and all things like that? All right, so here are your average salaries. We talked about the jobs that you could get if you picked different concentrations. We talked about what the concentrations would look like in terms of classes. And now we have average salaries for specific areas. And this is, check this out, because this is new graduates. This isn't everybody, but this is what you could be making if you got a job in this field, in this area, um, right when you graduate, your first job out of college. So general management, which had the most job offers of any field in business, right, was management. And that didn't include these specific areas. So if you lumped them all together, management, all of these areas are by far the most jobs. Um, the second most jobs, you guys want to guess, it wasn't management. Think about all the majors in the College of Business. What would it be? Second. You got it. What did you say? Accounting. It was accounting. Yep. So. Management, I have to say management by far, <laughs> but the accounting came second. If you include all of these offers in there, there are a lot of management offers that were made. Um, in, in, it can be in many different types of fields, too. So we're going to look at average salary di differs depending on if you're in healthcare versus retail versus food service, right? That makes a lot of sense. Healthcare will probably get paid more. All right, so human resources, they're making pretty good money, 51. International business, um, starting out a little lower for 40,000. Uh, and logistics, they're about the 50s, right? For many of these areas, what you might expect. And again, it depends on what type of field you go into. So if you're in medical, you're going to be making significantly more money. This actually, to me, would suggest the benefits of getting you know, a double major in biology and business, probably. That would, uh, if you're interested in science at all, that would probably set you up um, to be a little different than other graduates. But you know, I've, seen, I've seen some people that have done that, that want to open their own dentist office eventually, or something like that, that um, they get double majors in a science and a business. Lodging, uh, a little bit less, and food service, a little bit less. So lodging would be like hotel management. Um, so it'll differ depending on which field you choose to go into. And this is median income again. And this is um, of all people, not just graduates. So that makes a difference. Human resource managers, 89. Again, not just new graduates, all people um, that are working in this field. Industrial production managers, that's the operations, technology, information systems, the technology component. Yeah, information systems, you know, they do well, as well as top executives. And this is the question, are you a leader? Are you going to work your way up in the organization? You'll have more potential in that case, too, for high income. All right, so you're asked to speak to about international dimensions of this major. So before I do that, what questions do you guys have about the things we've done so far? You see our areas. We have five areas. We love management. At least I do. How many of you are already management majors? How many of you? Well, that's actually quite a few. Almost like this whole side. Um, how many of you keep your hands up if you also raised your hand to be start your own business? Yeah. What kind of businesses do you guys want to start? Wow, yeah, that's. Great. What business do you want to start? Well, you know what kind? Um, 
What is it? Okay. Okay. All right. So depending on daycares have specific requirements if you want to open a daycare. So um, you should talk to an advisor or somebody about that. If that's if you know what you want to do, then you should talk to somebody about that now to make sure you get the educational requirements to do that. Or else you have to hire somebody that has the education to do that, which is also possible. What else? Who else? You guys raise your hand. Yeah, you tell me. Gun shop and custom yeah. gun smithing shop. All right. We don't have education in that specific area. We can help you start your business plan, though. <laughs> yeah. Hotels. Oh, yeah. There's lots of opportunity around here, right? So we'll get you a good internship somewhere you can uh, absolutely. Yeah. Trash company. Yeah. You weren't the one that I talked to in the orientation, were you? The example I just used is in the class. <laughs> so uh, is it local trash company? Yeah. Yeah, that's what I thought. In Maryland. Oh, it's not local. It's yeah. local in Maryland. Yeah. Very good. So you just, one of the examples I've spoken to you before. Good news. Um, what else? Yeah. I want to start an uh, improved flower delivery company. All right. <laughs> Why is it improved? Something about like maybe someone coming in and like raising the flowers for you or at okay. and then you get them and then like you don't know what to do with them yet, they're sitting on the stuff. All right. So let's say, yeah, in our, um, if you're in entrepreneurial management, the Management 320 class where you can, is the creativity class. What's going to make me different from everybody else if that's where you want to go? All right. Very cool. Anyone else want to share what they're going into? What are you going to do? Yeah. Yep, landscaping. Also lots of um, potential for internships around here for landscaping. Yeah, absolutely. Very cool. All right. So international dimensions, as I mentioned, we have study abroad programs. We have a international management option. And um, if you're in management and you're doing something international, you're probably determining first how to best operate within different cultural environments, political environments, economic environments, legal environments, in terms of your strategy for operating in a place that's very different, an environment that's very different from your home area. The other part of that is that organizational behavior element, right? So it will be people acting different because they come from a different culture, people perceiving things different because they come from a different culture and trying to hone your skills at interacting with people that are different than you. So you don't offend anybody, right? So you have basic cultural knowledge where you could go to a different country and not totally offend somebody so you didn't want, they didn't want to do business with you. So there are probably two main areas of international uh, management is the strategic components of how does the environment differ, political, economic, legal, legal cultural, and the people aspect. How do people behave differently and think differently? So these are the two aspects I actually have listed here. And the last thing I was asked to comment on are our clubs. And so I mentioned the SHRM Club for Human Resource Management. Great for networking. They're linked directly to uh, there is a national SHRM chapter and the local core coastal organization of human resources where they do events where you practice your professionalism. You know? Dressing like a professional, interacting with directors of HR, talking to them about what they're looking for in candidates and HR people. Very good opportunities around here. Shrimp Club, very active, um, doing events and networking, even competing in a case competition on a nationwide basis that they hold at Clemson every year. So that is our Shrimp Club, and this is their mission. So that is the last part I was asked to speak to. Is there anything else, Tim, that you want me to add? I'm going to ask for questions again, but. Um, what, uh, what's going on with the big game? I'd be interested in that sort of thing. Yeah. yeah I'm a member. OK. <laughs> well, then you tell us. <laughs> All right. Beta Gamma Sigma is our business honor society, and it's the highest honor you can achieve in the Wall College of Business. It's by invitation only in its second semester junior year or senior year. And so it's the top 10% of business students that get invited. So it's a big honor, something to work toward. And um, 
and it's based on GPA, the top 10%. So somewhere 3, 7 ish, usually. It's relative to what everyone else has as their GPA because it's 10%. But um, you'll get an invitation. And you'll be invited to be inducted, and it's a lifelong, lifelong membership. They have networking events. They have uh, discounts on certain things because you're a Beta Gamma Sigma member. Um, I got a discount on my um, student loans when we consolidated them. So anything, <laughs> really, you can get a di discounts on lots of different things for Beta Gamma Sigma. Um, it is a one-time membership fee, and they have local networking events in big cities, actually, you could go to. You can also put on your resume, and that makes a difference to show you are the top 10% of What's your class. It Well, when I was doing $75. So that was, yeah, it's only one fee lifetime. On your resume, it can affect, like, your job. <laughs> well, when you get invited, we can talk about that, right? Sure. We'll figure it out yeah, then, to get yeah. everybody... Uh, get <laughs> <laughs> we'll get you an internship first, where you're actually getting paid. <laughs> That'll solve a problem. What else? Questions you guys have? Yeah? What is human resources? What, what are they doing? What would they do on a daily basis if that was your job? Yeah. They're, they're yeah, they could. They, um, what? What? <laughs> the fire part. It, it, people don't necessarily hate you. You know what, though? Well, if, if they're getting fired, they also, also hire people. I mean, there's a lot that goes into it. My wife's in the, the human resources track. She's, yeah. She likes it a lot. I, well, that's my specialty area as well. So, and we have, yeah, we have great faculty in this area. And, the thing is that if you're going into management, you're going to be dealing with people, most likely. Um, and so if you're a manager of people, you will probably be hiring and firing people. You'll probably be disciplining people. And that is a really hard job to sit somebody face to face, not for you. <laughs> Once you get there, to sit with somebody face to face and say, I'm sorry, I have to let you go. And then they cry and they say, but I have a family to feed, and you're like, oh, God, my heart's, I can't, I'm sorry, I'm so sorry. Or they get angry at you, right? It could be the opposite reaction. So that's probably for, if you're in management, you're going to be dealing with people, and you may be hiring and firing. You may be doing those things, even if you're not in HR. But I would say if you're a manager, you're, you're dealing with people. Um, so HR people would actually, if you think about the management level that's actually dealing the hiring and firing, um, they may be determining the level above that, like the strategy for people that you would want to hire. Um, what does the job description look like? What are all the jobs we have in our organization and what are their job descriptions? And then you, t you do a job analysis, you write a job description, you take that and you turn it into a job ad. And that job ad is what you use to hire people. Um, that's part of the background of HR. You can figure out compensation models, which is also going to be based on the job description in terms of how many, how much knowledge, skills, and abilities do people need and what tasks will they carry out will impact how much they get paid because people that do more have higher order tasks will get paid more. So HR people would be figuring this stuff out. Um, if you're in recruiting, if you're the recruiting manager, you might be traveling a lot and going to different places. You might be going to colleges and saying, you want to work for our company because of uh, You want to convince them to apply. You want to convince the right people to apply, you know, the, the great students and the best thinkers to apply to your company. And that would be, if you're in recruitment, you have a different job description than, you know, any, anyone else. If you're in training, you're creating training programs. So it depends on your training needs analysis in your company, which is something HR people might do. But, so, you know, you do a needs analysis to figure out what type of training do our employees need, and then you create that training and you give the employees that type of training. So, um, yeah, well, diversity training, sexual harassment training, um, communication training, interpersonal skills training, any type of training you could think of really. Could be on, you know, we'll figure out that they need technology training, right? So you get with the real experts in the area and you create a training program and, and, and infiltrate it through your company. Um, so labor relations, uh, if you work in an area or a company with people that are unionized, you might be negotiating a lot with unions. And there are people that just have that as their job. 
somebody in the post office actually um, that I know who that is their job is to negotiate with the unions and they're in the HR department. So does that give you there's a wide there's a pretty wide variety. Um, and it could be based on what you find most interesting. You know, people, extroverted people persons, people, would be great recruiting managers, right? Because you have to be talking, convincing people, yeah, this company is the best place to work forever. Good teachers would be good training managers. Yeah. What else? Good question. I'm on the international track. Yep. I know we have a study abroad, but is it like can we work abroad instead of studying for that like, term? Yeah. Do you have connections for that? There's some flexibility. We do have some international internships. Um, they're going to have a little caveat in the internship office that said it's if the if a specific type of internship is what you want, it's your responsibility to find it. But we do have a lot of help for you trying to do that, and we do have connections, particularly with Citigroup that are international. Um, we uh, yeah, they just have the application cycle for that. A lot of our students applied for those internships. But we can help you, absolutely, try to make those connections. Um, yeah, we I do have a... I spend my time abroad working and yeah. trying to get my foot somewhere with international language and learning. Okay. Right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Let's, uh, Dr. Darla Domke de Mont is okay, the yeah, one. Okay, yeah, yeah. Yeah. She's the one with the great, so many international connections that could help you talk about what she knows of and what the potential is for that. Absolutely. She knows a lot. Yeah. <laughs> Never asked that question. Yeah. What else? We're over your time. What else? This important questions. I'm here if you need anything else. And I'm right down the, uh, the hall in 323B if you need anything else. Um, yeah. Does uh, a lot of math put required, like your management? It's the same, it's well, it's less than for finance and accounting, but Math 132, which is calculus, is required for all BSBA degrees. So one only? One math class? You, ha you have, if you don't test into Math 132, you're going to have to take algebra first. So you could, if you test really lower in math, you'll have to take Math 139, wait, Math 129, Math 130, and then you can have Math 132. But if you test right into Math 132, then that's what you need to take. There's a statistics class as well um, that I, uh, statistics teachers usually won't consider it really math. But, um, and then there will be some numbers. When you have to analyze, you have to be able to analyze numbers as a business person, right? You're dealing with numbers all the time, whether it's number of employees, number of products, revenue costs. So we have to have some skill. And that's what differentiates a business major from other majors, probably, that we would be better at doing that. Yeah. So if you're good with numbers, like really good, like whiz, is that a good idea to go in accounting or management? Well, you know my bias. <laughs> the most numbers that we have, if you don't like numbers, you do like numbers in management, um, would be the operations and technology management is where the most numbers are. Um, there will be, will be some, even cost and revenues are everywhere, but... Um, <laughs> So no, we're over. Thank you. The accounting fields are hiring as well as management. They're both in growth modes. Yeah. It depends on what you like and what you want to do. You probably work with more people as a manager. If you don't want that, then maybe accounting is a different choice. But then again, you could be a manager of accounting. Yeah. So. <laughs> Managing the numbers, how much money they yeah. spend. Yeah. And that's if you're strictly accounting. Yeah.